Uh, wait, hold on. My name is Daniel Skaber, and this is uh. No, that's terrible. I'm here in North Carolina, and behind me, this startup's founder, Daniel, is printing foam layer by layer with this original apparatus that will ultimately be powered by solar panels on Mars. You can't see it from this angle, but beneath it is a separate apparatus called the dozer system used for transport of this machine and the other materials used for projects. My name is Daniel Skaber. I'm thinking about how to build homes on Mars, and these two robots are a good starting point for what I think is the future of Mars construction. So there's two robots. Uh, there's BuilderBot is the one that does all the building and Dozer is the one that transports material and does site preparation. We want to build houses without, without humans. So I think it's about time we start practicing on how to build on Mars uh, with prospect of Starship taking off and, and actually getting us there at a reasonable cost. I think uh, we should prep for the future and, uh, and start building things like we will on other planets. Solar powered, so it's got uh, solar panels, so it, uh, if you look at it from a top down view, it almost looks like a flower. It's designed to be buried, so the exterior, it's ugly right now, but you're not going to see that at all. Um, it's going to be completely covered in, in, in earth. Um, that's that's the other purpose for Dozer is as after after the build is done He's the one that comes back and and covers it up uh, on the inside Is it going to be a smooth concrete finish? That's going to be painted and everything else you'd expect in a home outlets switches lights Plumbing so we've already done some tests. Uh, we can attach all the mechanical stuff to the walls um, And then encase them in the concrete. So everything is is completely finished without human intervention. When I started this project, I completely threw out the code book. We're almost certainly not gonna be building on Mars the same way that we do here. No two by fours, no cinder blocks. So it's mostly just me, but I've been hiring contractors from all over the world. Um, got a guy in Kenya, a guy in uh, Russia. Well, he, he doesn't live in Russia, but uh, yeah, so I just, uh, every every task, I find somebody that's talented in that, in that specific thing and, and I, Send him, send the task over, and I, I get the results. So, and what's your background to have the confidence to plan something like this out and get it all together? <laughs> so, uh, I have an aerospace engineering degree, um, but I never pursued a job in that in that field, and um, I guess now I'm kind of diving back into it. So, um, I started a software company with my brother. It's called called Modalister. Um, so kind of realized that you can get a lot done with with help from around the world with a lot of a lot of people I've had uh, some help from some friends so to fabricate things um, my wife is tremendous help um, my kids do <laughs> they, they climb up in there and, and and screw things together and do all sorts of stuff like that but uh, um, yeah it's uh, it's after these first few builds uh, we're gonna be looking for some people and uh, making a second machine that, that can print much, much larger buildings. So we're looking, right now this is the smallest building you can print. Um, with telescoping arms, it'll be able to print, I think, something about 50 feet in diameter. Is it charging a DeWalt battery too? Um, so it's there's two separate power systems on the building machine. Um, because it rotates, I didn't want any wires to go through, um, so they actually communicate with uh, with radio. So, so there's a power system for the bottom one, power system for the top one. Uh, the charger's on it, um, but uh, that's really just for the legs. It just opens and closes the legs, so it really doesn't need a large battery for the legs. The larger batteries up top, that's for the build, um, and then Dozer has a. a a lot of batteries. It has um, 200 amp hours um, lithium lithium batteries, so it can operate. Dozer can operate doing like uh, grading and things like that for about two hours on 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 a charge. I, when I first reached out to you, 
I said all these things that it was going to do and then I realized I got to change a lot of uh, it will to it does and so I spent a few months uh, making Dozer and it was really important that it, it can operate remotely so um, from anywhere in the world you can you can log on to it uh, it's password protected. <laughs> so the way I envision it is that these two machines just arrive on like on a flatbed trailer with all the material pods and no human has to be around. The human driver can leave the trailer there and people would log on and remotely operate the machines. Testing out different foams, uh, different nozzles, different speeds. So there's a lot of variables that go into this. Um, I think printing with foam is, is expanding foam is, is, is a challenge in itself because the as you're printing it, the, the rows don't stay perfectly level. So I have a sensor on this arm, on the, on the foam arm that senses the level of the previous layer and it just follows the contour so I don't I don't need necessarily need to have perfectly like mm -hmm. straight lines because eventually it, it just it will get to the top and, and fill in other foam it was working really well if there was like a mistake say there was an air bubble in, in the line in, and there was like a low spot it would repair itself by by filling in that low spot so there's there's a lot of changes I want to make for sure um, for one I need to uh, Make sure the speed is is steady. So there's a couple of spots where it kind of gets kinked up and jammed a little bit, and it slows down, which messes up the print. Um, I think also it's a time of flight sensor, so it, it shoots some light out, and then it measures the time that it takes for the light to get back to the sensor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's accurate down to a millimeter, so it's it's pretty impressive, um, and. In, it's cheap too. I think it's like six bucks on Amazon. Wow. So <laughs> it's pretty incredible what you can get nowadays with with uh, with respect to sensors and things like that. It, it's caused some problems. Direct sunlight. We found out that it, it does have some some problems. All of our all of our tests so far were done at night, and, mm -hmm. and we didn't realize that until the morning we started printing, and we we're like, oh, what's going on? This this thing's kind of going haywire. The legs and the arms are exactly the same. The the body is made up of two different size pieces, three or four different uh, different parts. And, and they're just copied so it can it can be uh, made very inexpensively it was only a couple thousand for for a builder and uh, all the parts are available on Amazon so if you want to build your own uh, I'll, I, could, I might be uh, releasing the parts list <laughs> Amazon has been awesome like for prototyping I just uh, everything I can get next day basically so it, it's it's made things a lot easier to to build. This was assembled off of Amazon one day shipping parts? Yeah, <laughs> that and Lowe's <laughs> for the most part other than the metal for the for the builder but that's uh yeah pretty much all, all Amazon. Oh you can go to our website uh, marsbasetexas.com and uh, email us through the site or go to the contact form contact page there. We definitely need more people to, to make Mars base a reality. Looking for some land that looks like Mars. Um, it's gonna be remote, obviously. Um, so it's gonna be a place where we're gonna invite a lot of the companies that have renderings of their their Mars type structures, like Apis Core has a beautiful rendering of a structure that they uh, would potentially build on Mars. Um, we'd invite these companies to come out to Mars base and, and build some of these structures that they have. There are, there are a couple counties in Texas that have no building codes so mm -hmm. that was one of the places that we're gonna go check out. If, if it's able to print the way that we expect it to, um, I promise my wife you just push a button and then it prints a house. <laughs> so um, yeah well, if, it, if it gets there we'll just uh, we'll build it we'll build a bunch of them. Are you self-funded to this point? Yeah so far yeah. I mean, I'm kind of rushing at this point to get this rental going. So in like maybe a month or so, if all goes well, uh, we'll open this up for, for uh, rental on Airbnb as well. The next machine is, is gonna be a lot more expensive than, than this one was to build. It's gonna be stronger. It's gonna have a lot of high-tech parts on it. Um, so right, it's just a PlayStation 2 controller. Um, you actually get these on Amazon two pack for uh, I think it was 20 bucks or something like that. Dozer has a Raspberry Pi computer on it that uh, connects through Wi-Fi. Um, it's got the GSM distance sensor right here, which basically tracks the height above it. So when I turn on the sensor, you can see it follows my arm and tries to maintain maintain a certain height away. So if I put my arm up, 
tries to maintain that that di that distance. So arm down. I want to smooth this out a little bit more. So if it just goes down to there, and it follows follows the previous path and, and measures the distance from the previous path. Really basic code that runs the the foam print. Um, basically, I just push one button to turn on automatic rotation, and then that distance sensor just keeps the nozzle one inch above the, the previous layer and essentially it'll just make a big spiral going upwards. On this iteration, does the arm extend or is it static? No, it's it, this arm is static. Um, it's, it's like a quick replaceable arm though, so I can take it off mm -hmm. in just a few minutes and replace it with a different arm. It works a lot better at night because then it has that one light source from the sensor. Oh, see, it just messed up. Unfortunately, we switched over to a different foam that's much more difficult to work with. It, it expands a lot more, so it's, uh, I was really optimistic that it was gonna be, work well, but uh, unfortunately, I like to switch back to the denser foam that, that doesn't expand as much, but it, it gives a more consistent bead, so it, you'll get that like classic 3D printed look, rather than, I mean, this this was kind of a mess. Really trying to nail down what nozzle is the best, what, uh, what distance, what height, um, and what speed, so once we get it, um, I think it'll work really well. Another, like, one big problem is it, it has, um, it doesn't have constant pressure tanks, so the tanks are pre-pressurized, and as they go down, the speed of the dispensing goes down as well, mm -hmm. so it has to be accounted for. So I have a lot of, like, knobs on, on the robot that's set. So I've built a couple houses from start to finish. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be, like, all these different things and as I'm growing up I realized that like you can't be everything but um, I'm doing my best <laughs> like to to try as much different things as I can so I I learned all, all the all the trades I did concrete I did uh, framing tile like basically everything that it takes to build a house electrical plumbing the foam materials pod is it's a two-part foam so it, it can't just connect in one spot so it actually rotates with the top the concrete material pod is actually not going to attach the same way because I only need one one port so I'm using a uh, almost like a fire hose like to get that to work I tried hiring somebody I described the project I was like I want to control a robot over the internet um, I wasn't able to find somebody that was like knew how to do it eventually I just did it with trial and error <laughs> the two second lag on construction equipment is just dangerous. Wanted it to be like 100% live, so we have a delay of like milliseconds. It's 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 really nice. I mean, it, depend, it depends it depends on the internet connection, obviously, but uh, um, we don't have great internet here, and it works it works awesome. Really, nothing stopping like a piece of equipment like that Bobcat from being automated and controlled over over the internet. Um, and you can't rent those on Mars, so... No, you can't rent those on Mars, um, but, you know, it's like when I was building this, the dozer, I, I was talking to my wife, and she's like, oh, it's too heavy, like, it's got to be light, but it needs to be heavy to, to be able to move dirt, it, it needs to be heavy. Um, that's why Starship is really exciting, because it can take, what, 100 tons to Mars? I think Elon Musk just said, uh, it only costs like a hundred thousand dollars per ton so I mean that setup right there is is, is about well, it's less than a ton so for less than a hundred grand send that to Mars so that, that would be incredible we joked around uh, saying that Mars base is gonna be built by kids so the amount of time they spend on video games mm -hmm. uh, thought, why don't we make a video game that is useful yeah so they there if you just imagine like a bunch of like kids driving around Dozer obviously would have to put some safety precautions on on the machine so they can't crash into each other and things like that. Um, but that can all be done. So you just like log in to this video game and uh, and cruise around on, on on some construction equipment on a, a Mars. It's going to be a fleet of vehicles when we're done. So Dozer can do a lot by itself, but uh, you can also work together with other dozers. Um, so if you had to push something that uh, one dozer can't push, pull up another dozer behind him, and now you have twice as much power. The kids are really excited about that idea. <laughs> it's like, so wait, Dad, you're going to build robots that kids are going to use to build Mars base. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Daniel wants to bring back child labor. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be child labor. I think they're going to have to. They're going to have to pay me to, to oh, use yeah. the robots. But um, 
yeah, it just sits out in the sun all day, charges the battery, so every day a couple hours of use can uh, can be achieved from each machine. You'll have their parents swiping credit cards for different exactly. skins. And... <laughs> yeah. It seems there's, in the old foam, two distinct colors. Yeah, so this was the old foam, although it was, uh, it was just like the remnants that I had after testing. Um, that foam worked really, really well. Um, the carbon fiber stitching was actually pretty difficult to, to get it done right. So I needed a staple um, that would come in a huge reel. So um, in order to attach like a giant spider web of carbon fiber in here, I need somewhere about like maybe 20,000 staples, 30,000 staples, something like that. When I was designing that, I needed something like some sort of staple that would work well and come in, in a high, high volume reel that could be loaded onto a machine and um, so that I wouldn't have to replace like staples every hundred staples. Um, I'm also using a spray gun. Let me just open that up again. It, this is designed for spraying, so I don't like it has way more pressure than I want it to have. Um, but unfortunately, the the valves inside the gun they they don't have much of a gradual opening. It's more of like open or not open. So the machine could go. I mean, that was a fun test to try it out going fast. Um, which on large buildings, it would it, it can go fast like that because um, it needs like some time between passes for the previous one to cure. Um, so on smaller structures, it needs it needs to go slower. Whereas on bigger ones, it can go a lot faster. And that was only half speed too, so it really it it really goes pretty quick. It's borderline dangerous at full yeah. speed. <laughs> yeah, I've crashed it a few times. So it's it's pretty scary. But uh, into w the print or myself, my yourself. things in, in things inside my garage. Like, cause if it's got three arms, so um, just keeping track of where all the arms are at the same time. Yeah. So I don't have like a traditional like I wasn't. Uh, I mean, honestly, I learned construction off of YouTube. Like, <laughs> so it's really awesome that. Uh, uh, YouTube exists and there's like such great content. Matt uh, Rissinger. What, what? Matt Rissinger and. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, with the better, better homes. Yeah, so just like things like that, um, just watching those and and just uh, trying, um, trying and failing and then trying again usually. Um, but uh, just the amount of work that goes into building a structure like this is just enormous. So I think. Uh, I think that needs to change. It was fun designing it. So I spent a long time in this house in CAD. Great view. Yeah, it did seem better in the winter when the leaves fall. I think Daniel's Mars aspirations are incredible and I can't wait to see what he comes up with next. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll make sure to stop by Daniel's startup again next time I'm in the Carolinas and get you an update.